Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kieran Mack, and thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like this video if you're watching us on YouTube, and please do subscribe. We are also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and a host of other podcast players. Now that that's all done, let's jump into today's show. And we'll start off at the first story of the day, which is in relation to the Omicron virus. Department warns Omicron could surge after New Year's. Weary of a potential surge in Omicron COVID-19 cases after the Christmas and New Year celebrations, the Department of Medical Services, DMS, is urging people to strictly comply with preventative measures to keep a lid on the pandemic. I must admit the Omicron variant appears to be spreading faster than Delta, DMS Director General Somsak Akisip said on Tuesday. If infected people showed mild symptoms, they can be treated in isolation at home, Dr. Somsak said. A recent virology report indicated the new variant could cause breakthrough infections. Despite this, vaccinations can help reduce the severity of the infection and anti-COVID pills are still considered effective. However, the best form of protection is complying with COVID-19 prevention measures, Dr. Somsak said. He said the severity of the new variant will depend on the number of infections, adding that no patients who have contracted it so far have needed to spend time in ICU rooms. There has only been one fatality linked to Omicron to date, and that was in the United Kingdom, he said. Vasun Chantrita, head of the Centre for Medical Genomics at Ramatitbadi Hospital, cited data from the GZ Global Data Science Initiative on Monday, saying Omicron is the only variant that can pull genomic parts from other COVID variants to combine with its own genomic sequence to produce three amino acids. GSAT is a global science initiative established in 2008 that provides open access to genomic data of influenza viruses and the coronavirus responsible for COVID-19. Omicron can be spread faster than other variants, but it seems to trigger less severe symptoms, including fever. That being said, no one knows what will happen if it successfully combines with genomic sequences from the Delta, Alpha or Beta variants, officials said. Thailand has now confirmed 11 Omicron cases, all imported. Despite the decreasing number of Delta infections, the Department of Disease Control may use RT-PCR tests to confirm whether infected people have Delta or Omicron, Mr. Vasun said. For now, Thailand should hastily administer third doses or booster shots of vaccines, he said. Prime Minister Prayat chan cha said the government has yet to decide whether current anti-COVID measures will be adjusted following the first death of a patient with Omicron in the UK. General Pride warned the public to avoid fake vaccine certificates as having one is a criminal offence, his spokesman said. All sectors must cooperate with COVID-free guidelines, he also said. And next up, Thailand's Maya Bay to reopen on New Year's Day with restrictions. Picturesque Maya Bay in Thailand, southern province of Krabi, will reopen to visitors on New Year's Day 2022, but with strict conditions attached, including no swimming in the bay, and the number of visitors at one time will be limited to no more than 375. Assistant Professor Dr. Tan, a well-known marine scientist, said in his Facebook post yesterday that the National Parks Committee, chaired by the Director General of the Department of National Parks, Wildlife and Plant Conservation, approved the reopening of the bay, which has been closed for three and a half years after coral reefs and environment in the area sustained heavy damage from excessive tourism activities. The National Park Committee agreed that restriction must be imposed to protect the bay and its marine resources if the bay is to reopen, said Dr. Tan. The restrictions are as follows. No boats may enter the bay area through the front axis and must use the opposite side where a landing pier for landing visitors is already in place. The number of visitors at any one time will be limited to no more than 375. The number of rounds of visits each day and the duration of each day are yet to be decided by Chief of the National Park and Tourism Operators in Krabi Province. No swimming is allowed in the Bay Area because there are many black-tipped reef sharks in the water which may pose a danger to swimmers. Swimming may also disrupt the sharks and coral reef in the area. Maya Bay was the prime location for the Hollywood film The Beach in 2002, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. And moving along, Thailand needs high-earning, high-quality tourists, value over volume to get 80% back by 2023. 
according to the TAT. The chief of Thailand's tourism authority, Yutasak Supasorn of the TAT, spoke to a seminar on the economic recovery after the reopening of the nation. He stressed that Thailand needs high quality tourists who are high earners and big spenders. Whether this means the focus has shifted from Chinese group tours, Bangkok Business News didn't speculate. They quoted Yutasak as saying that the government's aim was to get 50% of tourists back next year and 80% by 2023. This means the target is 20 million for next year and 32 million for 2023. He told a seminar that Thailand attracted 40 million tourists in 2019, but 2020 was a washout due to the pandemic. Noteworthy is the Phuket Sandbox revival this year was the fact that each tourist spent 70,000 baht, he said. He said that from now on, Thailand must stress value over volume, noting that the country is wonderful for culture and health tourism in particular. Now, I always find it interesting that this particular tourism authority governor seems to spout absolute nonsense each and every week. I mean, I wish he'd really sit back and think about what he's saying and stop trying to alienate tourists from coming to this country. His words have meaning and they have volume. And when you talk about just wanting to attract high quality, high earners, is this the super rich you're talking about and everybody else doesn't matter and you don't want those people? Well, maybe people have been listening to his message for the last year where he said the same thing. And maybe this is why the tourism numbers are pathetic up until now. He should sit back and be happy that people choose to come to Thailand during a pandemic and spend their hard-earned money. He should be celebrating that, that, not trying to make up numbers for the future. That I'm very sorry, but he's living in cuckoo land if he thinks they're going to get back to 20 million next year and 32 million in 2023. He's really living in an alternative universe with these numbers. The reason the Phuket Sandbox had a higher spend than normal was mainly due to the fact that people had to pay for PCR tests and had to pay for hotels in advance and could only stay in certain types of hotels. And this is the reason the net spend was higher. Now, if you eliminate all that, the net spend will drop down again. Because people will choose cheaper hotels, different hotels, and they won't have to pay 2,400 Thai baht for a PCR test every time they needed it. And in fact, during the Phuket Sandbox model, it was two PCR tests. Very, very expensive. And yes, push the net spend up higher. But of course, that will reduce as you eliminate these things. Thailand needs tourists, and it doesn't matter who they are. If people are willing to come to this country and spend their money, they should be accepted welcomed and celebrated. Travel is for everybody, not just the super rich and the high earners. And I'd hope that the government at some point will think about replacing this governor of TAT and putting in someone who understands the very nature of travel. And moving along, I want to discuss about the Thailand Pass um, and hotels in Phuket and Pattaya and the Test and Go program for these areas. Mm. So let's start off with Phuket. Phuket's system greatly differs from Bangkok and other areas in relation to the Test and Go system and program. Most hotels do not sell Test and Go packages. Generally speaking, you book the SHA Plus Hotel separately and then book and pay for the PCR test and transportation. Now, the PCR test can be booked on the website www.thailandpsas.com. So it's thailandpsas.com. The cost is 2,200 Thai baht per person. You can pay by credit card on the site. Once booked, print off the receipt and keep it for when you arrive in Phuket International Airport. The PCR test is also done in the airport, not at your hotel or at a hospital. Generally speaking, in Phuket, the results for the tests take about six hours to get. They will be emailed directly to you. Some hotels will try to sell you their transportation, but please note that you are under no obligation to use the hotels. The only requirement is is that you book an SHA Plus certified transfer from the airport to your SHA Plus hotel. Now, bearing in mind, and just to let people know, you have to book an SHA Plus hotel. You get a receipt from them stating that you have booked the hotel and this is what you use to upload onto the Thailand Pass website. The PCR receipt you will show at the airport when you get off the plane. You go through various different stages along the way before you get to finally do the PCR test. Now in relation to the transfers, to give you an idea of the fares you should be paying from airport to your various destinations, if you're going from the airport to Katu, 
Think about paying about 500 baht, maximum of two people in the van, okay? Phuket Town, about 600, and actually various other places, Patong, about 600. Don't overpay for these taxis. I think 600 is about the average price you'll pay for it. I'll leave a link to a place that I found on the web that seemed to have quite reasonable fares, and you can have a look at that and also have a look at other places. Again, I'm not affiliated with it any way at all. I just happen to see them on the web and they look quite reasonably priced from the airport to various parts of Phuket. So just a little bit of information for you in regards to that. Now for Pattaya, Pattaya, it takes approximately one and a half hours to drive from Bangkok to Pattaya. So a lot of people are still using it as a test and go facility. And there's a few hotels that are offering the test and go package because Pattaya is also a sandbox area. So we'll start off with uh, the five-star range, and there's a couple of hotels that I found. The Avani Pattaya Resort, the test and go package there. Now remember, all prices include one night accommodation, RT-PCR test, a one-time ATK test, and transportation from a Suanapum Airport in Bangkok. Single room, 10,360 Thai baht. A little expensive in my opinion, but that's what you pay, I guess, for a five-star hotel in Pattaya for the test and go program. Another hotel which looks very nice, and I, I debate whether it's five-star or not, is called Blackwoods Hotel Pattaya. And the reason I say that on Booking.com, for example, it is listed as five-star, but in Thailand there is no agency that really grades hotels, and hotels grade themselves so and give themselves their own star rating. So that's why I'm saying this. Test and go package again. All prices include your accommodation, your PCR, your ATK test, and your transportation from Suanapum Airport. Single room, 5,980 Thai baht. An additional adult is actually the same, 5,980. A child will cost you 1,800 and an infant, 1,800. Now in the four star range, I found the Golden Tulip Patia Beach Resort. That was for a single room, 6,500 Thai baht. They didn't quote for a double room for some reason. I'm not sure why not, but I'm sure there would be a supplement. And the cheapest hotel that I found in Patia for the test and go program was the Beverly Hotel Patia. Now, again, test and go package. It included your PCR test, your accommodation, your ATK test, and the transportation from Swanapoom. Single room, 4,600 Thai baht. A double room, two people, 6,700. That's an additional 2,100 Thai baht, which I think actually is pretty reasonable. And that is the cheapest I found for Pattaya. Now, according to the Hotels Federation in Pattaya, a lot of people are not going there from Bangkok to Pattaya, but there are some. So if you are considering it, I've laid out a few options for you. I'll put these on my website for you. It'll be up maybe later on in the afternoon. So and along with links to these hotels and the same on Phuket, I'll put down the links to the uh, PCR booking website and some transfer options for you and just general idea of things if you're thinking of coming to thailand and you need a little bit of information you need some ideas just going to put them up on my website i'm obviously just trying to help people out who are considering coming to thailand in the next few months and looking for options now just to let people know as well the thailand pass technically expires on january 31st 2022 so they reevaluate it then so things could change in the future there could be more restrictions there could be less restrictions we don't know but just so you know that now any hotel that starts quoting you in march for test and go i would be very suspicious of them because really you shouldn't be quoting when the program hasn't been renewed so just a little bit of information for you out there as well so as i said hopefully this is useful to you and we'll move on to the next story of the day Singapore takes off on VTL Lane to Bangkok. Singapore Airlines will operate 25 weekly flights from Bangkok to Singapore after introducing the first vaccinated travel lane flight on Tuesday. Of the 25 weekly flights scheduled for the Bangkok-Singapore route, 14 flights will be designated vaccinated travel lane or VTL flights, which offer quarantine-free entry into Singapore for eligible customers. The designated VTL flights are are SQ705 and SQ707. Singapore Airlines will add another daily VTL flight from the 1st of January 2022. This will increase weekly VTL flights from Bangkok to Singapore to 21. The weekly total VTL and non-VTL flights will reach 32. Under the vaccination travel lane, vaccinated travellers who meet all applicable eligible criteria can enjoy quarantine-free access to Singapore.
And moving along, air pollution reaches unhealthy levels in Bangkok. Bangkok's real-time air quality index reported unhealthy levels of air pollution on Wednesday afternoon. The pollution monitor says Bangkok has exceeded 151 points in the morning and reached high PM2.5 levels in multiple districts in the afternoon. Red levels were detected in six districts of Bangkok. The Pollution Control Department said on Wednesday that they expect the PM2.5 level to be high in Bangkok between December 17 and 18 because of low wind. The situation is expected to improve between December 19 and 21 from better airflow. It's causing some local residents to question why the pollution has hit Bangkok earlier than normal this year. But Bangkok residents have long called for attempts to combat the toxic smog that sometimes forces authorities to close schools. In 2019, local authorities dispatched water cannons and water spraying drones to tackle the city's worst pollution wave in years. The Director General of the Pollution Control Department and Chairman of the Centre for Resolving Air Pollution denied that the pollution levels had exceeded normal limits in a statement on Wednesday. But he still warned city dwellers to use their vehicles conservatively, reduce open burning, and he asked the public to be vigilant for residents living in areas where the amount of PM2.5 reaches red level. He also cautioned those in red zones to avoid outdoor activities and wear a mask. Local government officials in Loi province warned sugarcane farmers this week to refrain from burning their fields after reports emerged that some farmers had secretly begun burning. Research from Thailand's National Institute of Development Administration, NIDA, suggests Bangkok's air quality at its worst can have concerning levels of toxicity, while the lingering smog being full of heavy metals and various carcinogenic compounds. The Thai capital has some 10 million registered vehicles, hundreds of pollutant pumping factories and numerous daily cremations, which experts say all contribute to the worsening annual smog. But the widespread burning of sugarcane fields in northern provinces is also contributing to annual pollution levels. And finally, the Phuket news. Phuket marks 48 new COVID cases, no new deaths. The latest Phuket Provincial Public Health Office daily COVID situation report has marked 48 new local infections confirmed across the island yesterday. Phuket taxi charged with debt of Swiss tourists and motorbike crash. An accident in Phuket has left a Swiss tourist dead and a local taxi driver in custody being charged with his debt. The crash took place Monday when taxi driver reportedly lost control of his vehicle and ploughed into the Swiss man who was driving by on his motorbike. The accident took place near Nyharn in Rawai sub-district. Thai military intervene over woman tourists in Phuket confronted over parking. ISCO Region 4, the military oversight organization for all of southern Thailand, has intervened over a Thai woman tourist arriving at a restaurant in Phuket to enjoy a meal with friends, being confronted and intimidated by a drunk parking attendant. And finally, Phuket chosen for data project to support COVID-19 response. Phuket has been selected as one of five provinces to pilot a project to develop a real-time database so that policy decisions regarding COVID prevention measures can be made quickly, concisely and appropriately for the situation at the time. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.